Okay, so last week we were talking about organelles that we find in um, protists, and we've been talking about the protist kingdom, and this week we're going to be moving in to talk about the animal and plant kingdom, and we're going to be talking about their cells and the organelles that make up animal and plant cells. Um, so bear with me, we have some things in common with protists and some things that are different with animal and plant cells. They're a little bit more complex. Okay, so um, the first three things that we're going to talk about are um, common to all eukaryotic cells, protist cells, animal cells, plant cells, and you are already familiar with them. Um, so the first is the nucleus, so here it is in your paramecium. And this is an animal cell, and here's your nucleus, and here's your plant cell, and here's your nucleus, okay? Remember that the nucleus is the brain of the um, cell, okay? All of your DNA and stuff is stored in there, so <clears throat> it um, controls all of the cell's functions. The next thing we're going to talk about is cytoplasm. It's a jelly-like substance. It fills in all the blank space in your cell. Whoops, I colored over some organelles. Um, so it's all this blank space in inside of your cell, okay, it's a jelly-like substance, and it holds the organelles inside the cell, and we'll get to more specific functions later, but every single cell has cytoplasm, and again, like I said, it's all of this empty space in your cell, okay, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about is your cell membrane, and the cell membrane um, is support and protection for your cell. It decides what can come in and out of your cell. And here's your cell membrane. It goes around the outside of the cell. Here it is in your plant cell. And in your paramecium, it is right inside where all those little cilia are. Okay, so those are the three that you already know. They are common to all of the cells we're going to be talking about this year. Okay, this is Objective 38. I can describe the shape of an animal cell and a plant cell. Um, in the last slide, you saw that your animal cells are more rounded shaped while your plant cells are more rectangular shaped. They are not always perfect circles or perfect rectangles, um, but they are, that, they are mostly that shape. Okay, so that, that's one of the ways that you can tell that a plant cell is a plant cell and an animal cell is an animal cell. Okay, now we are getting into the specific organelles, um, and you can see from the, the first two pictures that I showed you, or the first slide of pictures that I showed you, that your animal and your plant cell had a lot more organelles in them than your protist cells did. And like I said, animal and plant cells are more complex, okay, um, because animal and plant cells are part of a multicellular organism. So they have more organelles because a lot of them carry out specific functions for each cell. Okay, so here's objective 39. I can identify and explain the function of organelles in plant and animal cells. We're going to first start with vacuoles. Um, and if you don't have some kind of colored pencil or a crayon or a colored pen or something with you, go ahead and pause it and get... Um, something to color with because we are going to be doing some coloring and coloring in the different organelles as we go along. All right, the first thing I want to talk to you about is vacuoles. Um, you have already heard this word. Vacuoles is common and is used in protists. However, in protists, it is used for digestion. In animal and plant cells, it is used for storage. Okay, so when we are talking about um, your animal cells, you can see these little pink things over here. Those are vacuoles, and they store food. There are several vacuoles in an animal cell, but in a plant cell, you see this one huge vacuole right here, right? Okay, and again, that is storage. It mostly, in a plant cell, stores water, and um, the reason that it's so big is because when this is full of water, it helps that cell to to stay rigid so your plants can grow tall um, and they can keep growing and they stay up straight. You guys know when a plant needs water, it starts to droop over. That's because this vacuole right here um, is not full and it, the, it, the cell itself cannot keep its rectangular rigid shape. Okay, so um, this is really important in plants and you can tell 
when your plant starts to droop, it needs water, and that's so that it can fill up that one large vacuole. So on your paper, um, go ahead and fill out your empty spaces and also color in the vacuole on the animal cell and the plant cell. Okay, our next organelle is the cell membrane, and again, you are already familiar with this because we had it already um, when we were talking about protists, and here it is. It goes along the outside of the cell, and it protects and supports the cell, and it is in charge of letting certain things in and out of the cell. It is called semi-permeable, which means it selects which things can come in and which things cannot, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more um, as we get deeper into talking about animal and plant cells. Okay, go ahead and color those in. Okay, another one that you are familiar with is the nucleus, but you might not have heard of the nucleolus. So the nucleus, um, same as in a protist cell, it is used for, um, it's the brain of the cell. It controls all of the functions of the cell. The nucleolus, on the other hand, is the cert, this little teeny tiny circle that's inside here. There's your nucleolus there on your animal cell. Here's your nucleolus here on your animal cell, on your plant cell. Okay, and the nucleus's function is to nucleolus's function is to make ribosomes, and we're going to talk about ribosomes in just a second. Okay, so your nucleus is your control center. It has um, DNA and chromosomes in there, which um, are in charge of cell growth and reproduction, and your nucleolus is going to make ribosomes. Okay, um, this next um, organelle is called a Golgi body, also known as a Golgi apparatus. This is something that is not present in protist cells, um, so this is the first time you're hearing it. And here it is in your animal cell, and here it is in your plant cell. Okay. They serve the same function in both the plant and the animal cell. Um, they receive proteins and materials from the endoplasmic reticulum, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and they send them to the other parts of the cell or outside of the cell. So this is kind of like your mail center. Um, it receives the mail and then sends it back out to where it needs to go. So that's what you can think of when you we talk about the Golgi body, that it is like your um, receiving and packaging center, like your mail distribution center, okay? It's going to receive everything it needs, and it's going to send it out to where it needs to go, okay? All right. Okay, um, the next one thing we're going to talk about is called mitochondria. Um, this is a really important um, part of the cell because without your mitochondria, your cell is not going to be able to do anything. This is the power of your cell. So here's one, here's one, here's one. Here's mitochondria in your plant cell. There's one, there's one, there's one. Okay, those are the mitochondria. Again, they provide energy for the cell. Okay? Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about are ribosomes. And we talked about that a minute ago when we were talking about the nucleolus makes ribosomes. Well, the reason that your nucleolus makes ribosomes is because ribosomes make proteins. Um, without proteins, your cell, again, is not going to function. So each little um, organelle in your cell has a different job. So the ribosomes are all these teeny, tiny dots inside of your cell. Okay, all of that marker is too big. Let's see if I can do it with the pen. All of these cell, these little circles all around here, all of the little circles, even these in the, over here, those are all ribosomes, so when you're coloring them in, you're coloring all these teeny tiny little circles, and that's really hard to do on my iPad, guys. All right, but it's all of these tiny, tiny, tiny little circles. There's three over here, there's three up here. Okay, so you're going to color all of those in. Um, those are called ribosomes, and the nucleolus makes them. Okay, so the next organelle we're going to talk about is called the endoplasmic reticulum. We call it ER for short. There's a rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, but they both do the same thing. It is our transportation system, so you can think of it as like the subway in your cell. Um, it transports materials and substances through the cell to where they need to go, and that is all. That is its function, whether it's rough or smooth, but the difference is this is a rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's called a rough 
because it has ribosomes attached. Okay, so there it is in the animal cell, and here it is in your plant cell. Okay, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes attached to it. So there it is here, and here it is in your plant cell. So that the only difference is your rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes, your smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not. Okay, <clears throat> um, and this is smooth over here as well. Your endoplasmic reticulum is always located around your nucleus. So you can see that the endoplasmic reticulum is surrounding your nucleus right here. Okay, if you look at this, which is your Golgi body, it looks pretty similar. So that's why I'm telling you that your, um, your endoplasmic reticulum surrounds your nucleus because it's getting a lot of things from your nucleus and it's sending them out, especially, remember, your nucleolus makes ribosomes. Um, so it's going to get those ribosomes and it's going to send them out to where they're supposed to be. Okay? All right, so smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, again, transportation system for the materials in your cells. Okay, this next organelle is only found in animal cells. It is only found in animal cells. So we're getting to some specific organelles that are special to just the animal cell. And this one is, they're called lysosomes. And their function is to help with digestion. Remember, animal, um, animal cells cannot make their own food. They have to get their food. So <clears throat> this is where that occurs. Digestion occurs in these areas called lysosomes. Okay, those are those perfectly round dots. There's lysosomes in your animal cell. Okay, it's going to digest old cell parts that have are worn down or um, not working correctly anymore, and it's going to digest also food, um, and then it's going to send um, those enzymes and um, to the mitochondria so it can turn it into energy. Okay, so all these parts are working together just like all the um, organs in your body work together. Okay, moving on, there are two parts that are specific to your plant cell only, and the first one is chloroplasts, and you know what those are because they serve the same function in our plant-like protists. They, um, it is the site for photosynthesis. Here's one, here's the other one in this cell. Okay, they're green and they are the site of photosynthesis, which is where our plant cells are going to get their food from. Okay. And the last um, organelle we're going to talk about is the cell wall. Um, this is, again, only found in plant cells. Remember when I talked about um, that plant cells um, have this big vacuole in it for storage and it stores food to help it keep its shape. The other... Um, part of a plant cell that helps it keep its shape is called the cell wall, which is another layer outside of the cell membrane um, that is very rigid and it helps it keep its shape because that helps each of the cells build up on one another so that plant can continue to go, grow really tall and strong. I mean, think about a tree, okay? <clears throat> each one of those cells has to be very rigid and has to um, stay in its place in order for that tree to grow, um, you know, higher and higher and higher every single year. Okay, without that rigid cell wall and a full vacuole, we're not, it's not going to be able to grow tall. So when you're looking for, is this an animal cell or is this a plant cell, we're going to look for shape. Is it rectangular-ish? And second, does it have a cell wall? Because if it does not have a cell wall, it is not a plant cell. Okay, um, I lied. We had one more organelle, and this is common. We already talked about cytoplasm um, when we talked about protists. But again, it's all that empty space that fills um, the cells. It's a jelly-like substance. It fills the inside of the cell, and it's going to hold all of your organelles. So it's all this empty space in here, Okay. Um, that is the cytoplasm, and like I said, we've already talked about it. Okay, on to our last objective of the slide. Okay, here is our last objective. It's objective 40. I can compare and contrast animal and plant cells. Um, so this um, Venn diagram shows you um, that an animal cell, again, is round. It contains lysosomes, which are used for digestion, and has several small vacuoles. Okay, 
your plant cell is rectangular. Uh, <clears throat> it contains chloroplasts. It has a cell wall, which helps to support it. Your plant cell undergoes photosynthesis. It can make um, food for itself, and it has one large vacuole. And again, the vacuoles in animal and plant cells are for storage. Both plant and animal cells contain all of these things, a nucleus, a nucleolus, vacuoles, a rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, ribosome, cell membrane, and cytoplasm. So they have a lot in common and just a few differences. Okay, that is it for today. Make sure you get all your notes down, and if you have any questions, please, please, please bring those to class. Have I'll see you in class. Have a great day.